Scooter sales have grown steadily over here in the UK over the last few years, to the point where they're almost outselling bigger bikes. Now, many manufacturers have, of course, jumped on the bandwagon, and not all of them have made scooters before. Many big bike manufacturers and even car manufacturers are trying to get a, a slice of the action. Now, this strange looking object is well, what can only be described as a scooter smart car hybrid is bmw's latest innovation it's called the c1 and really it's a scooter commuter with a roof the idea behind it was to combine the maneuverability and convenience of a motorcycle whilst providing new levels of safety weather protection and practicality bmw introduced their commuter back in 2000 receiving a mixed response on one hand car magazines hailed it as a great achievement and definitely the cheapest way to own a new BMW. But on the other hand, bike magazines slated it, labelling it pointless. But pointless it isn't, because this scooter is more or less the same width as any other you'll find on the road. But this, like a car, has a roof to keep the liquid sunshine off your helmet. It also has seat belts to hold you firmly in place. And on the top spec models, you'll find things like a stereo, which of course is music to your ears. That's if you can hear it with your helmet on. The C1 is available with either a 125 or 200cc engine, both of which are Austrian Rotax engines, tweaked by the rather clever engineers at the Bavaria Motorworks. The little four-stroke motor churns out 15 and 18 brake horsepower respectively, theoretically giving the C1 fairly strong performance, reaching, wait for it, top speeds of around 65 miles per hour in the 125 guys and 75 mile per hour for the 200 version. Hold on to your seat. Not bad, but in terms of overall style, the C1 doesn't exactly have the allure of a slinky Italian motorcycle. And let's face it, it can look rather awkward whether it's parked next to another scooter, a motorcycle or a car. You kind of feel as though it should have a bay all to itself. And then of course there's the price, ranging from 3,395 to 4,100. This bike ain't cheap. And you've got to ask yourself the question, do you want to spend one and a half to two grand on a small 50cc scoot? and then spend the rest on waterproofs? Or would you rather ride about in this innovative little machine? Well, as for the performance, well, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. It's got a four stroke Rotax engine, which delivers reasonable amounts of power, considering how much weight it has to lug about. It's a heavy old beast. Throttle response is by no means electric, but these bikes shouldn't be judged on their engine performance alone. And the bottom line is that well, it doesn't handle properly, but that's due to its all-up weight and its high centre of gravity. It's almost like trying to take a house round a corner. Ah, the comfort factor. Well, I reckon a pretty respectable 8 out of them due to this lovely soft squidgy seat. It's great if you're on long journeys. Now, if you're a learner rider, you won't miss not having a pillion behind you. And you might even gain some extra confidence from being strapped in by this double crossover seat belt. As for the ride overall, well, visibility is good through the rune screen and it feels very smooth. The only problem is it, it feels very big, it, it feels wide and it, it does feel a bit heavy. In fact, it feels so big it reminds me of riding a horse. 9 out of 10 for build quality. BMW are renowned for their finish on the cars and bikes and they've certainly carried that over to the C1 even though this is built in Italy. Alternatives available? Well, I certainly haven't found nothing yet. Value for money? A flat five out of 10, I'm afraid. It's nearly three and a half grand for a 125 scooter. That's almost double the going rate for your average little scoot. Okay, there's not that many of them about, so it may hold the price. And when you think about it, there's a lot of bike and a little bit of car for your euros. But is it worth it? It's time for the all important street cred. Ooh, six out of 10, I'm afraid. I can't say I'm a huge fan of the C1. You see, the problem is, if UK owners could ride the C1 without the helmet, then they'd probably sell them in huge numbers. You can ride it without your helmet anywhere else in the world. After all, that's the whole point of the seatbelt roof thing, isn't it? To allow more freedom riding a bike because you would feel when you were riding in a car. But then again, I suppose you don't have to scrape the dead flies from your visor in the summertime.